guys welcome back to my channel so today i have somebody back for another video hi guys so in this video we are actually going to be talking about being dark skinned i have started a series called being dark skinned and i'm going to have various guests talking about this topic and so today it's somebody this is a topic that is really close to my heart because this is something that we have both experienced over time so to get started i'm going to share a video from a ted talk with you guys and then we'll discuss about it after comes out i'm so excited i'm from la so this movie is particularly close to my heart i saw it in theaters three times so as i'm perusing the internet devouring everything i can about this movie i come across the casting call now, this movie has already come out, and I'm no actress, so I wouldn't actually audition. But I just wondered, hypothetically, if I did, what role would I get? So I look at the casting call, and I'm going down the categories, and I start at the top, the A-girls. The casting call reads, these are the hottest of the hottest. Models. Must have real hair, no extensions. Well, since I have 20 inches of Brazilian hair extensions on my head, doesn't quite apply to me, but that's fine. I go to the next category, the B-girls. The casting call reads, these are fine girls. Long, natural hair, must have light skin. Beyonce is the prototype hit here. Light skin, also not me. And might I add, not even Beyonce made the cut to be an A-girl. But that's fine. <laughs> I go to the next category, the C-girls. The casting call reads, these are African-American girls, can't have extensions, must be medium to light skin toned. Now, maybe back when I lived in Boston, in the middle of the winter, could I get away with being medium skin toned? But since I've come back to sunny California, where I spend all my free time baking in the sun, not so much. So I scroll all the way down to the last category, the D-girls. The casting call reads, these are African-American girls, poor, not, not in good shape, must have a darker skin tone. A darker skin tone. Well, I guess that's me, a D-girl. So guys, I don't know how you feel after watching that video, but I can tell you that we were both very sad when we watched that. Yeah. So what we want to discuss is, that was international, but then we want to bring it closer to home and talk about how true this is for Uganda. So what we're going to do is talk about the media in Uganda and how dark skin girls are portrayed. And Africa as well. And yes, okay, Africa. in Africa. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is movies. So uh, the movies that I remember from growing up, when we were growing up, the biggest thing for us was the Ebony's on, on WBS. Yeah. And when I think the Ebony's, I think about that really light skin. I don't remember her name. I, 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 don't, I think it was Sharon. I'm not sure. But she was like clearly mixed, and I think she was the lead in the show. Oh yes, yes. You remember yes, her? Yes, yes. She's she the was. lead. She's like the damsel in distress. Like. Cover girl, and then the other the other people in the show. I remember there was a chick called Nakawinde, darker skinned, really quarrelsome because they, that's the way that movies in Uganda like to portray darker skinned girls. I think also the fact that when you're growing up, you don't see enough people that look like you, like your skin tone. In a country where, I mean, obviously, you should have a representation, but ironically, it's not. Mm. There, like you're only seeing that the, the your portrait has either been quarrelsome or like local. <laughs> that, that 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 lead role is always like a pretty light, skin yeah, light girl. skin girl. So those things stick with you, especially when you're younger. I don't know if you've noticed, but we're, we're both from the north, and northerners are portrayed as very quarrelsome. Yeah. So sometimes when I get mad, I've had someone ask me whether I'm going to beat them. <laughs> Because they are so sure that an angry dark skin girl, what's coming next, it's going to be punched. Yeah, and that comes from uh, movies. Like, yes, and our media really does yeah, like to portray yeah, people from that side as 
fighters, hunters. Exactly, we're always yeah. like the, yeah. the weird guy on the show, the really. Yeah. Just you, you're never like that the literal like or the, the prayerful girl yeah. or yeah. So now that we've we've ranted about movies, next we're going to talk about ads and the portrayal of, of dark skinned women in ads in Uganda. John? Um what comes to my mind is companies like um, Movit. Movit. Braids, the darling braids. Mm -hmm. When you go to downtown and you see their posters up, mm -hmm. like <laughs> the girls are like extremely light. Yeah, um, so yeah, and the, with the hairstyles and there's no portrayal of you at all. Even move it for for their hair, their, their hair products and, and their, their skin products mm -hmm. as well. They do not portray like darker skin girls always a lighter skin girls there i think they're trying to say that to be beautiful it's supposed to be light skin and um the weirdest thing about this is that uganda isn't a country with many light skin people because it's not like kenya where they have coastal people or tanzania tanzanians yeah. who are naturally light skinned or south africa who are also naturally light skinned like this is a country where i think more than half of the people are naturally dark so it's very hard to explain why you're selling a product to a whole country, but you cannot represent that country. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so even Joan said braids, it's it's always a gamble looking for hair because you either have to do yeah. black hair or like that's true. off black yeah. because you don't know what it's going to look yeah, like. Yeah, you don't, yeah. Mm, you've but not, you have to play it safe. You've not seen like someone who looks like you wearing the hair on the, on the package. Yeah. yeah. So um, the ads that we've spoken about are mostly beauty products, but then I also want to talk about like the other types of ads that yeah. are out there. For example, if they're selling like food or a food product, or they're selling like a product like insurance True. or True. even jobs. things like like for, um, medicine. I was going to say Coca Cola. That's food. <laughs> medicine. Yeah, yes. medicine. Um, a telecom network. Yeah. Yeah. So all, all the media is, is streamlined in a certain direction. And so the thing about that is once you get so used to not seeing yourself or seeing yourself in someone else, mm. you sort of just, I don't know, you start to also not exist. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it's only Nivea that tries with their ads because Nivea, I think more than half of their ads always feature a really dark-skinned woman. Yeah. yeah. They always balance it out, which is, which is really nice. So next, we're going to talk about music videos. Yay! <laughs> I feel like you can learn music videos those days weren't. Yeah, that's so true. bad. Like, yeah. it was okay. Yeah? If you think about like the obsession, Blue Three, Blue Three, or like Irina Blue, quite a number. Juliana, yeah, really. Music videos have had have always because I think that one. How do I not throw it? The thing about a music video is you have to do it when you have the time, right? Yeah. So most of these people were already naturally good at singing. And so there's no way you can say, I'm going to not film you, um, but we're going to use your voice. Although, fun fact, that was the case for this popular band called Millie Vanilli. I know you've heard of them. Girl, you know, it's true. Yeah, it turns out that those two very light-skinned men were a cover for this dark, fat, short black man that used to do all the singing. And then they still would go and get all the fame. Music videos now, I'd love to, to go to Nigerian <laughs> music videos. They could be saying African girl, and then like all the girls in the video are like, okay, not me. Like, And also some castings for those music videos, sometimes it's like clearly stated, stated like light skinned. That's true. Yeah, so growing up, I also know that for both me and Joanne, on our top 10 mm -hmm. things of dream careers, we didn't have being a TV anchor. No. I, I, I considered journalism, but the behind the camera journalism, not like not in front. forefront. Where no one can see you. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. What this sort of mindset does to you is you, you turn to go for a job where you've seen people like you. Yeah, that's true. And what is that? They were like for me, it was like I like work. I was like, oh my god, 
yeah. yeah so when you see someone dark skin do something you're like oh maybe i can do that too so yeah. we both wanted to be models that's because, true and even aside from you wanting it everyone will tell you that everyone yeah. will be like you yeah. dark skin be a model yeah that's because true. that's like one of your ultra solutions yeah yeah and also um for the media we both noticed that there's always there's not room for many successful like dark skin girls there's always that one that is shining at a particular moment let's say like the modeling career it was Alec Wake and then acting it's now Lupita yeah. they're not there's never 10 but for white white women white, yeah. white women there's so many you can actually name five even ten or like yeah, yeah white models just like that but how many black, black skin models can you name yeah that's true i think i can only name like four yeah so guys that is it about dark skin and the media don't forget to subscribe comment hit the notification bell so that you know every time i post a video bye bye